school district just north of here in the Phoenix talent area, uh, almost 40% of kids in, in the school district there lost their homes. And most of these were, were, were low income uh, families. And so the state and different agencies brought um, counselors into the school and, and they provided money for extra counseling, but there just wasn't enough. And most of these kids were not going to the counseling groups. So they came to my little nonprofit and said, could you use story as a way to help these kids heal? And so we got together a little team of compassionate listeners, we called them. We found people who had skills in listening. We talked about how to listen compassionately. We went into the schools and we created uh, youth story circles. And this was the story kind of goes at things uh, diagonally at slant. And we knew if kids could tell stories about their lives, they could, they could begin to access both their gifts as well as some of the struggles they were engaged in. So we did this process with a number of groups of kids. And this was right after uh, kids were first allowed into the school. So we had kids in groups of five or six. They got the masks on. They're six feet apart. They're in these small groups. It's very awkward. And eventually we asked them a question about what's one, tell us about a moment this last year where you were struggling. Tell us about a moment. We wanted them to tell stories where they're, where they're re reliving an experience. And we, we did some safety protocols, only talk about the things you really feel comfortable talking about, things like that. The kids told these stories. And afterwards I said, what was it like to share these stories? And I remember this kid, six foot two, Seattle Seahawks jersey on, you know, rose his hand, it's like, Antonio. Antonio gets up and he's like, it was joyful. And I was like, why was it joyful? And he's like, because all of us are depressed. And I said, well, why are you joyful that everybody's depressed? He said, because as each person was telling their story, I could hear myself in their story. I knew what they were talking about. And that felt joyful. Many of you said the adolescent longings were for belonging and connection. Remember, um, when you're young and you're, you're coming into this age of adulthood, you're moving through this passage, you don't know what's normal or not. You don't know that it's normal to be anxious in an anxious time or to be depressed uh, in a depressing time or to feel lonely when you're not around people. You don't know that everybody feels that way or that others feel that way. And to get kids to share at a real level, to create settings where they can speak and listen to one another is incredibly nurturing uh, of the presence of God. It's like two or three gathered. And so you want to create experiences where kids can talk in real ways with one another. How do you do that? One of the ways you do that in, is, is um, you find ways that kids can speak anonymously. So in these youth story circles, eventually we got to a point where we would gather with the kids and they would just write on a little slip of paper, we'd have a question like, what's your longing today? Or what's something you're really grateful for? Or uh, what's something you're afraid of these days? What do you find yourself thinking about? And they would write one sentence. Then we'd gather the kids in a circle and we, the adults would read them. And the adults would write them as well. And no names attached. And you would watch these kids go, holy cow, I had no idea that, that other people are, are feeling these things or thinking these things. Sometimes they were funny. Sometimes they were really poignant. Sometimes they were really um, frightening sometimes. I remember in one group, of middle schoolers, um, we, were, we asked them like, what's one fear you're carrying these days? And they were all anonymous and we read them and one kid wrote that I am not lovable. And these are a group of 12 and 13 year olds. And I remember reading it out loud. And when you read something real, you know, no matter what you see on the surface, it calls to the deep, it calls to the deep. And when we read these things, you could feel the sounding and these young people got still and got quiet when they knew that one of their peers had written in a very honest way, I don't feel lovable. I remember this one girl, she has half her head shaved, the other, the other half is dyed these sort of rainbow colors. And she was kind of screwing around the whole time we're there, not really paying attention. And when that was read, she got very focused. And I was getting ready to sort of respond to all the things we'd heard. And she said, Mark, can I say something? And I said, okay. And this young woman, 13 years old, got up and she started to walk around the circle and look in the eyes of each person. 
And she said, I don't know who wrote that statement, but I want everyone in this room to know that I see you and I love you. And it was just this profound moment of this young person hearing the cry of her peers and then hearing her capacity to respond with love. It, we're deep spoke to deep. We're, where the cry of the one hurting is heard by the one who uh, offers compassion and love. And part of our work is not only to allow young people to have those spaces where they, they hear the presence of God and feel the presence of God, and not only to hear their own hearts and longings, but to have places where they can hear what's going on in the peers uh, around them. And so this is the art is trying to find spaces where reality can break through, uh, where the truth of who we are can show up. This is the art. And, and it takes a kind of attentiveness and a kind of trusting that God is waiting to show up, a trusting that, that those young people, their deeper selves is yearning and crying to come to the surface. And despite all the cacophony of, of, of what they display or what the culture does to them. I am focused on what's down in the deep. And every once in a while, you'll sense a young person testing the waters. Like, do you really care? Are you really listening? Are you really present? Does this stuff really matter? And I need to be available when I hear that to say, you know, you're talking about you don't want to go to college and, you're, and, and, and you just want to just get out of your house. I hear you're really scared. What's going on there? And I might have to wait six months before I can say that because it's a little too intimate. I have to make, wait till like, uh, you know, uh, uh, after some pizza night and she's helping me clean up. And I just say, you know, you sound kind of scared about the future. Yeah, I'm terrified. I was terrified too. Tell me more about that. And I'm finding ways to bring that depth of, of, of humanity up to the surface.